Okay guys, I've been trying to do this project for almost a year now. I've actually had the parts for about a year, but um, one of the things I want to do is I want to install the optional inputs and outputs for a uh, Holy Terminator setup. Um, for some reason this factory harness didn't come with a lot of the different inputs, uh, mainly oil pressure. And uh, I also wanted to get transmission line pressure in there and transmission temp so I could actually monitor that stuff and uh, you know, from my uh, 3.5 dash. So I bought a couple things here about this. This is the alter optional uh, input wiring. It's, I don't know if you can see that. It's, uh, it's really holy terminated. Like I, like I said, this has been sitting on my workbench for a while now. And basically it's just uh, the extra wires. And these are white. Looks like a couple of grays. Gray with the red. And so th this gives you actually five, I guess, five different optional inputs. Um, so that's five wires. So a couple of inputs and outputs I, I can I can do with this. But I for me, um, so when I, when I was looking at this, this is just for optional inputs and outputs. But when I was looking at the other diagram, the uh, the uh, Holy uh, HP diagram. Which you know the, the Holy Terminator is basically an HP ECU, and uh, they they actually actually has a uh, option for oil pressure, which is not one of any of these colors. So I don't want I don't want to waste an input or output by trying to get a different uh, sensor in there. So I'm gonna build a, my own little wiring harness thing out of uh, I got some gray wire here, a 20 gauge wire over to a place called Marvac in Costa Mesa. They're kind of like an electronic store, you know? Kind of like a... It's a radio shack, but more of like a... I guess high-end... Not like high-end, but... It's more of like electronics people. <coughs> Where they actually sell like lots of like diodes and capacitors and stuff for like real deal uh, electronics people. Um, okay, it's cool. So I actually had originally bought this bus. That was a mistake. Um, because I need to tap into f the 5 volts and the sensor ground and the harness. So I was going to tap in with this, and uh, I was going to make a gray wire. I have a black wire, gray wire, and red wire. So in the in the Holy HP harness, it's orange is the five volt wire. So I'm trying to match all, keep all the colors matched. So and then the oil pressure on the HP harness is a, is a solid gray. So that's why I bought gray wire, and then obviously black is for the ground. Um, but I already actually had the sensors connected. I actually, I did this a long time ago, you know, like six months ago. I actually teed in the, the sensors. I just haven't connected them. So hopefully the contacts aren't corroded. You know, they're so I live down here at the beach. So this was actually a hundred psi sensor, and it was the same sensor I used for the uh, fuel pressure. So like with the Holy Terminator, they actually wire in, you know, a fuel pressure gauge. But I'm trying to get oil pressure, transmission pressure, and uh, What's it called? Uh, tap. Actually, I might even hook my fuel gauge up to this. I don't know. Still haven't figured it out yet. So, let me show you the gauge real quick, and I'll uh, come back. So, obviously, this is a Bronx 351 Windsor. It's forward, and the oil pressure gauge is on the side there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's down there, right there, that little silver thing. And I actually have it teed in. That's the actual. That's a mechanical pressure gauge here. Since I have my Fender flares cut out. You can, there's probably a better vision of it, but that's the mechanical gauge for the actual like, the analog gauge I have, and that is the 100 psi uh, oil slash uh, right there. there oil slash it can be used for oil, fuel pressure, I guess water pressure too. They said, but I gotta hook up a wire and tee it into that thing. I gotta make a custom uh, wire, and I have some. Uh, when I was at Marvac, I bought some of this. Oh, I almost tripped on my own shit. Um, I bought some of this wire loom stuff. You know, like that braided wire loom. I got the thin stuff for the oil pressure, but. Okay, new seats. So, yeah, I gotta get that custom wire harness in there. Where are the pigtails? It came. The sensors came with pigtails. So. And uh, I probably guess I could probably have gone thinner wire. I figured that was about 20 gauge, 18 gauge. So it's pretty close. And then, oh yeah, for the, for the oil pressure gauge, because I guess what I needed, I needed one of these. 
these little sensors right here. So the uh, I had bought this thing was 82 cents, but that is the looks the same to me. That should fit into the harness. I bought an optional pin for the um, for the oil pressure because I don't want to waste any inputs or outputs. And uh, the cool thing is it's already wired in. For that. So if I actually send that, if I wire in that, that 100 PSI sensor, it's already wired for that, for oil pressure. So it should automatically pick it up and I wouldn't have to do any custom programming with it, hopefully. And that's the goal, so. All right, I'm gonna get started with this wiring harness. I'm gonna measure it. You know, I'm gonna use a piece of twine. I'm gonna kind of get the basic length of what I need and uh, start custom making this, this whole harness for the, for the oil pressure sensor. So. I'm gonna do oil pressure sensor today. And that's gonna be my main goal. And then tomorrow, if I have time, I'm gonna do the uh, transmission uh, line pressure and temperature sensor. All right, cool. Yeah, so like with any uh, sort of like computer sensor or any kind of wiring, you always want to solder it and shrink wrap it. Um, yeah, because sensors are, are super like fickle to like uh, any sort of like variances. But um, all right. Okay, so I'm going to get that soldered up. I'm going to go back, shrink wrap all these once I'm done soldering it. Then get them all straight and I'm done. All right. I'm going to make a little shrink wrap iron here. There we go. All right, cool, pretty basic. So I'm going to come back and I'll show you... Uh, I'm going to put a bigger piece of shrink wrap over all three of these. Cool, cool. Alright, so I'm going to put one more big uh, shrink wrap over the three pieces of shrink wrap that it's dead. I don't know if it'll shrink enough, but we'll see. Make this tight. Okay. And a V angle. Cool. We're going to be kind of close, but that's good enough for me. And I'm going to wrap it in one of those uh, sleeves. All right, cool. I decided to take the shrink wrap off and I wanted to put it right directly into this braid right here. So I have the braid come in, shrink wrap, then to this uh, pigtail here. So and that's it, hopefully this will look cleaner. Yeah, I want it as clean as possible. Oh, it's alright. Not bad. I think it will stay. We'll see. Long term. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, so I'll be back. I'm going to get this thing in the car and connected and brought into the actual cab and then I'll show you the wiring 
to the uh, Holly ETU. You guys can see that. I, I gotta clean up my wiring down here a little bit. I got some things going on here. But uh, I gotta tap into this wiring harness right here and that's where the orange should be the five volt. And black should be the uh, sensor negative ground reference. So I'll show you how I'm gonna tap into that, but I think I'm gonna keep this extra slack just in case I ever gotta move things around or change it around here. But uh, yep, okay, so I'm gonna get that going. I'm gonna tap it in and I'll show you how I do it once I'm done. All right, thanks. All right, guys, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these little taps to tap into the uh, five volt and the ground. Um, and the reason why is in case I ever sell this thing, I don't want to mutilate the wiring harness. I want to keep it as intact as possible because I might upgrade to a dominator. So if I have to re resell this thing, it's, I don't want it to be all uh, whacked out. So um, if this doesn't work, and I'll, I'll solder it directly in. But um, this is definitely not my preferred method of doing this. But just trying to keep the harness intact. So uh, obviously these little things are here, you know, just tap, tap wire in. So negative, it's pretty basic, it's right there. Right there, the orange and the black. Orange and the black with a white stripe. That's what I need. And then the input's gonna go right next to it. And I can all see this. I'm gonna turn my car key here. All right, I just wanna verify that I'm getting actually five. I have one lead here, but I just wanna make sure I'm getting. Turn my radio down here. Make sure I'm getting five volts. Sorry, I'm trying to get my lead attached here. Okay, there we go. Five volts, so I got a good tap. Now I can actually, I'm gonna put my little wire distribution because I got a bunch of sensors I gotta put in here, which require five volts. And that's good, so I'm tapped in. And I gotta get my uh, oil pressure thing fed in there. It's kind of a pain in the ass. It's not, it's all wrapped up in there. It's hard to get to. But, uh, okay, so what's next? I gotta put the, uh, put this thing in the plug and then put these things in my taps. All right. Hey guys, so I've never used these, I don't know if these things, uh, I've never used these before, so. But they look like they were pretty cool. I got them at Marvac, but. I don't know if you're supposed to use a metal tap to go in there or if you can just put unstripped wire in there and pull it back and it's going to cut into the wire. I don't know. It was just in, a, in like, a, a, like a miscellaneous bin that I saw there. So. Let me see if I can go online and see if I can figure it out. All right. So I haven't even fired this thing up yet. So before this would just say air. Now it says negative zero. That's the oil pressure right there. So, let's see, this first fire up. So, awesome. Looks like I got some uh, reading there. It says 54 PSI, and that's right in the range. I mean, that's my analog gauge right there. It's about 55 PS PS5 there, I guess, 50. That's 60, it's hard to say. That fits at 52. 52 PSI. That's the analog. So, getting some oil pressure now. That's cool. Cool. Awesome, awesome. All right. So, let me get back to this real quick. So the cool thing is now that I have these uh, links tapped in here, this is my negative sensor negative and my five volt reference. So I can hook up a lot of different sensors now. Input, so I have the option for four more inputs and one output. So I can, at least I can get three and three more in here. That's kind of, I mean, I don't plan to get more than that, but I guess you never know. I mean, uh, but I will be probably getting a dominator one of these days just so I can do electrical or uh, transmission control. But, uh, because I'm willing to probably convert into a 4R70W that you saw in my other video. So, I'm not gonna get this all mounted back up again yet because I'm gonna put 
more sensors in tomorrow. I'm going to put a thermosistor in there for the transmission sensor or transmission temperature and oil. So I'm going to do the exact same thing for, uh, um, I'm going to do line pressure for my, it's an AOD. So I want to always make sure I have line pressure, you know, and I can take a look from my computer and I'll know what's up. But another, another reason why I'm doing a uh, uh, transmission temperature is that I can kick on my fans, my electric fans, uh, based on like a, like a like a statement. I guess I can create like a like a rule. Um, I don't know if you guys ever have any, you guys have experienced computer programming, but it's kind of like an if then statement in a computer when you're program. Okay, tired right now. So if you're computer programming, it's like an if if then statement. So if my transmission temperature gets to let's say 180, I want you to kick on the fan high gear, regardless of what the coolant temperature says. You know, I want the transmission temp to override that and kick on the fan. So that way I can kind of protect my transmission. So, all right, so that's it for this uh, video. I'm gonna get back tomorrow and uh, get the other sensors going in. So, cool, it worked. Okay guys, what's up? So yesterday I got the oil pressure in. Uh, today I'm doing transmission temperature and throttle valve uh, pressure for the uh, transmission. So uh, one of the things I do first is I'm gonna just kind of gauge the wires and I feed them down. That way I know where to cut them, and I can start building a little harness. So, pretty basic. Right, so I'm back here making the harness, the transmission pressure, and this is the actual uh, thermosistor, or the actual uh, trans temp, the thing that goes into the uh, transmission pan. So, I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to take that blue boot off. I'm going to heat it up and pull off. And you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some shrink wrap on this thing. Kind of give it a little extra layer of insulation because it's right near my exhaust. So, uh, all right, so you'll see when I'm done here. Hey guys, got the cable done. So it's still kind of hot. That's the TV sensor. It's a 100 psi sensor, and that is the transmission temp sensor. I just put some shrink wrap on there, and I'm hoping that kind of maybe get an extra layer of insulation, maybe the wire, because it is pretty close to the exhaust pipe. So. Um, and I soldered the tip too, I don't know if you can see that, but it's soldered too as well. And then uh, it goes into the sleeve here and goes down. And then I have to fish it down now, fish it down and uh, get it through the uh, firewall. Alright. Alright guys, that's the transmission sensor. And that right there is the throttle valve pressure. And it feeds up, I just want to keep it away from the exhaust. That's why I said see how close it is to the so I'm thinking I'm going to get a low profile. Well, this one is probably not going to work anyways because it's made by Equus. And I don't know the values of it, so um, I'm probably going to have to get like an auto meter one with, with uh, known values. Because I'm going to have to create a, a custom thermosistor uh, table. Alright. Alright guys, so I have that wire fished through. Firewall, and I'm just going to plug it in like I did before with the, uh, the other inputs. You know, just get them the right pins and uh, for this one is 12 and 13 on the uh, P1 connector and the power and the, and the positive or the, the ground. So that's going to be that, it for this video. Um, in the next video, I guess, or one of my upcoming videos, I'm going to do, uh, I'll show you how to do uh, custom triggers in Holly. You know, uh, trigger the, uh, like for me, I want to create a custom trigger that basically turns on my transmission or turns on my cooling fan if my transmission gets to a certain temperature. So overriding whatever the coolant's doing, um, because I don't want the transmission to overheat, and I have that bigger cooler out front. So, you know, whatever I do, I'm also running the cooler through the actual radiator. So regardless of what's going on, I want this thing to cool off. I don't want it to get above like a certain, like say, like 200 or something like that, or I don't know, like 200 would probably the max I'd do. Um, but uh, yeah, the only time I ever gets like that is on a super hot day, and I'm idling for a long time in gear. But usually if I take it out of gear when I'm idling, it, it doesn't usually overheat. So it's in gear, hot days. Uh, I guess I really haven't... Well, I guess I have. Last year I, I took this off off-roading a couple times with the AOD. But... Alright, so that is at this... Or sorry, that's done with this video. So, yeah, I'm working all day under this thing, so I'm tired. Um, okay, get it going. And, uh, alright, I'll see you next video.